Hello friends and welcome back finally to our VGC Daily Battle Series. We are now in the 2020 season. We're in the run up to London World Championships next season, which is very exciting in itself. And we're going to be back with our Daily Battle Series Monday to Friday every single week playing different archetypes, delving into the VGC scene and hopefully helping you guys out getting prepared for those big tournaments in the run up to the new year. Because when the new year comes around, obviously we're going to have Sword and Shield release and the rules will be reverting on January the 4th to the Sword and Shield s new games, the system, everything, Switch, everything, it'll all be changing up, so very exciting, but until then, we've got the Ultra Series rules, they have been confirmed uh, for this portion of the season, so this this half until Sword and Shield comes out, so we've got plenty of time to look at different archetypes, and as always, if there are certain archetypes, certain builds, certain Pokemon that you'd like to see featured on this series, do leave a comment down below because I love hearing your ideas, your thoughts, what you want to see and I will make sure to try and feature as many of them as possible going forward. But kicking into it today, we're going to be starting off with a Rare Ogre team. So I've got to give a big of a shout out. I put a tweet out last week and uh, asked what you guys would like to see and uh, Dempsey, our good friend Will, who is also a patron of the channel, suggested that we start off with Rare Ogre. And you know what? I haven't played Rare Ogre the entire Ultra series that we were doing the Daily Battle series in the 19 season. So I thought, why not revisit it, come back to it? And it's shown throughout the, the, the VGC 19 season how strong an archetype it is. It's one of my personal favorites as well from the 2016 season. And it's strange that I've never really looked at it or played with it on the channel. So I thought, let's get into it today. Let's play it for the next week at least. And uh, we may play it next week. We might change things up. But this is an archetype that I've thrown together it's uh, and it's got a few differences from your kind of standard builds and uh, we'll see how we get on as always the team is down in the description below there is a raw paste and a poker paste of the team for you guys to try out and just check out the details if you want but to run through everything before we get into it we've got blue orb obviously on Kyogre we've got the ferium um, or the ferium on Tapacoco choice band on Rayquaza I'm really loving that item at the moment uh, standard incineral uh, berry with snow Flare Blitz, Fake Out U-Turn, and then we've got Tornadus, it does help out with Tailwind, gives us a bit of speed control, helps us shut things down with that priority pranks the taunt, uh, we've got Hurricane, benefits from the, the rain as well, and just generally a good support Pokemon, gives us another ground immunity as well, and also takes advantage of the Delta Stream that Rayquaza throws up when it Mega Evolves, and then rounding off with Cortana, Pokemon I've loved all Ultra series, so uh, I just want to kind of carry that on and bring it into the team. It makes up that Firewater Grass call that we've got with the Incineroar and the Kyogre. So, balancing the team out, we've got to watch out for Trick Room teams, I think, to begin with, but we've got to really utilize Tornadus, Taunt, Fake Out, Incineroar, and try and get around things that way. So, we'll see how we get on against the Trick Room teams if we come up against any this week, and we may change things up going into next week or just move into a different archetype altogether we'll be back with streams on thursday this week and i swear we'll be getting into the games very soon um so 8 p.m this thursday come along to my twitch channel or sarah studios uh, the link is down in the description as always and uh, it'll be great to see you catch up and we'll be starting to play some more vgc getting forward i see the rule the the the, the ladder the the ladder has reset so our rating has reset, which may be not a bad thing, although we were doing pretty well after the end of our uh, roulette series. Let's go with Aether Foundation as the music to kick us off today. Flawless, flawless record at the minute. Let's see how we can get on with this. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent of the episode. And I tell you what we'll do. We'll just cut straight to it from now and we'll come back when we do bump into our first opponent. And we've got a first opponent of the episode, we've got Thomas. I didn't see where he's from, but wherever you're from, Thomas, you're welcome and it's gonna be a pleasure to play you on the channel. So let's hop over into Team Preview. So Thomas kicking us off today with a team of Lunala, Tapu Fini, Salamence, Incineroar, Stack Attacker, and Groudon. Very familiar six, uh, making up the World Champion winning combination that we saw at the World Championships recently. Um, whether it's the same build or not is another question, but these Pokemon are very strong. I think it is. They had Stack Attacker, right? 
I'm just with my mind playing on me anyway. What are we gonna do? We've got to make use of Kyogre for sure because Groudon, obviously the big threat on my opponent's team, will prevent Kyogre being able to uh, operate as well as you kind of want it to. Uh, Lunala is the other thing because it can offer uh, speed control. Um, alongside that Salamence and the Stack Attacker and if it is the similar build to the World Championships winning team the Tapu Fini does become a bit of an issue as well. I think I would like probably Tornadus that uh, Prankster Taunt is going to be very useful. Do I want to bring Incineroar? I mean it's decent against Lunala, the Intimidate's very good against Groudon stack attacker especially and then probably pair things up with my restricted duo in the back and that should be all right i think there is an argument that stack attacker could be uh cartana for us could be good it does well against the stack attacker and the tapu finny um but i think we can kind of just plow our way through without it this one so let's get into it. It's weird getting back into more serious content after we do in the roulette series. And for those of you that didn't see any of the roulette series for like the last two months on the channel, we've been playing around with randomly selected Pokemon. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun, but uh, I haven't really been playing too much serious Pokemon. We did the um, the showdown series while I was away on holiday, which I will be doing a lot more of uh, going forward um, alongside this series. But uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, but now getting back into it a bit more seriously, uh, I've got to put my, my brain back in and we'll start getting in. We're going to see Salamence and Incineroar come out for my opponent. Um, does it look like their Incineroar is faster than ours? It definitely does. So um, we may want to... I mean, we could trade fake outs here if we want. Our Tornadus isn't sashed, so there's no harm in us just going for a Tailwind and a figured it out onto the Salamence here I think. Um, the other option is always going to be going to try and uh, U-turn out here with our, our Incineroar which you know we'll probably do the next turn to try and get a bit more a little bit better board position. Preserve that Intimidate as well for later on in the game which is going to be quite pivotal for us. Um, do a hard switch though because one of the things we could maybe see is the opposing Incineroar go for a Flare Blitz into our Tornadus which wouldn't be ideal even though it has been Intimidated. Uh, just to get Kyogre onto the field would be nice but I think having the slower Incineroar here makes a lot more sense because they're probably going to pivot out with their Incineroar if they go for the U-turn. Um, and our Incineroar will go last, so it means we are able to get Kyogre in um, after they they potentially get Groudon in. Whether they do or not is another thing. We're going to see a Tailwind from ourselves, Tailwind from the Salamence. Uh, let's see what this opposing shiny Incineroar goes for. It's just going for a knockoff. Knockoff our Berry, um, which, you know what, isn't too bad, really, to be honest. Uh, now, we can get Kyogre in. Because I think the one thing that you've got to really worry about if you, you, you go down a Groudon route against Kyogre is do you switch your Groudon in knowing there's a Rayquaza lurking in the back? It's a big question! Um, but yeah, obviously one of the things. I mean, the other thing we could have done there was taunt the Salamence and then get our own Tailwind up. Uh, you know, like, we've matched Tailwinds now. The Salamence is definitely the fastest thing in the field. It's a bit awkward. Uh, the other thing what we could potentially do is switch Tornadus out, keep it for later, so we've got the Tailwind for later on, get another Intimidate onto the Ments and go for an Ice Beam into that slot just to try and get rid of it because if we can eliminate my opponent's speed control, it means later on when we've still got our Tornadus, we can take advantage of that and still give ourselves a little bit of an edge in the, the late game and that's kind of what we want to be doing. So uh, bringing in Incineral, like I say, uh, probably see Groudon come in here, yeah, that's fine. Um, don't mind this too much because the Groudon coming out now is completely fine. The other thing we could have done there was definitely was just switch in Rayquaza and just water spout it. But as I say, I really want to prioritize getting rid of this Salamence now. It is a bit of a pain. It's faster than everything on our team. Um, if it's got Drake and Meteor, it threatens our Rayquaza. So, and yeah, as you can see, it is protecting itself this turn. Um, now it will come down to, I mean we do have fake out here, but we could also, I think our Kyogre is bulky enough to take a double attack if my opponent does stay in. Um, I'm going to bring in Ray and I'm going to water spout. We could have scalded, it might have been the better idea. We're going to see it go out and then Incineroar come in, but <laughs> this works out better if Kyogre is faster than that Groudon, which it might 
could likely be. Who knows? We'll soon find out though. But the switch to Ray here is nice. Again, it's it's meaning that Incineroar's in the back, so we've still got access to Fake Out, and we've still got access to Intimidate as well. Uh, we'll get the Rayquaza in the airlock. Groudon going to protect here, but uh, Incineroar going to take a full power water spell. It's not in the rain, obviously, so it's, it probably will be able to take this, depending on its bulk. Um, but I mean, we're, we're in a really nice position going into this next turn for sure. Uh, Salamence likely to come in, I would imagine, this next turn. Um, and that's not ideal for us because we, like I said, we want to be able to remove their speed control. Um, what's the Lunala? Huh, that's interesting. Hmm. Now we could just Scald the Groudon. Because Lunala coming in kind of gives me the impression that maybe you've got Y God. Uh, I'm going to Mega Evolve, crunch the Lunala, and I'm going to go for that Scald into the Groudon. I don't expect Crunch to take down the Lunala, um, but it will do a, a hefty amount, and we'll outspeed it. And when, I'm just banking now on this Y God coming out. If we don't see it, if we see a Z move and then Precipice Blades, things could get a little bit more. Uh, tricky for us, but we'll see what happens. Uh, there's the wide guard. Okay, so it's kind of always good to just go with the intuition. You know, when you're in games like this, um, if if it makes sense to you why some like your opponent's brought in a Pokemon in a certain situation, then um, it, it normally is the the right thing. You know, you you're not going to get it right every time. Oh, Dragon Claw coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to be enough though to take down our rear. Unfortunately, the Scald will be enough to take down this Groudon. We did see a weakness policy activate on that Lunala, so we have to be a little bit careful around that. A Dragon Claw is another um, tech that you you're seeing quite commonly used on uh, opposing um, Groudons right now, and especially in the World Championships, we saw a massive spike in its usage there to deal with things like Salamence and Rayquaza, which it, it does so well. Uh, Salamence is going to come back in now. We've got to be a little bit careful about the Salamence. It is going to be able to um, to deal with... <sighs> Do I switch in? Uh, thing is, Salamence has to attack now, I think. Uh, I'm going to switch in Incineroar, and I'm going to do I just protect Kyogre? I think you have to Hyper Voice. And I'd imagine the Lunala to kind of probably attack into the Kyogre here. We know it's not got the Z move, so it can't really touch Kyogre. There is the threat of a Tailwind going up from my opponent. Um, so if we leave Rayquaza in right now, the Salmon 6 is down with the Hyper Voice. It does outspeed us, so that's a little bit of a problem. Um, and the Lunala probably wants to try and protect the Salamence by um, by going for that plus two Moongeist Beam into the Kyogre or Psyshock. Uh, there's the Hyper Voice. Uh, instead of taking that Moongeist Beam, yeah, there's it. There it is, into the Kyogre. Um, okay, so we do have Fake Out Pressure now, which you've got to think my opponent may want to protect the Salamence. Um, one of the things we could potentially go for is just a, a maybe a U-turn into the Lunala, switch out uh, into... Uh, I'm going to go into Ray because I feel like everything that we've got, we can sacrifice Ray. As long as we've got Tornadus, we can get it in. We can get ourselves uh, that Tailwind up. And then Kyogre's in a really nice position to deal with both of these threats. So Salamence protecting threat of the, the fake out there. So that's fine. Um, you know, Lamingo Beam will be into the Ray. And uh, we'll get ourselves back onto the field with Kyogre now. And we've got that that board position where we can um, we can get Incineroar back out with the Kyogre, fake out, Ice Beam game's done, so should be enough yeah, and there we go, Lunala gonna go down and it's a pretty clean win for us for kicking off back into this series uh, which is quite nice, so like I said we'll get the Kyogre onto the field, we still got Tornadus in the back if we want, but we know with the Salamence protecting that last turn it makes our decision making a little bit easier going into this one where we know we've got that. Like, they have to go for the double protect, if anything. Um, we also get another Intimidate onto the um, the Salamence, which is, 
you know, its physical side is pretty much the only thing that threatens the Kyogre, so that extra Intimidate here is useful, and uh, if they don't get the double protect, then we get the fake out Ice Beam and pick up the, the victory here. So, Ice Beam, like I say, and the fake out into the Salamats. And, uh, yeah, like I say, they pretty much have to go for the double protect, and even if they get it here, it's still, it's still going to be really really difficult for them to close out with how bulky Kyogre can be and especially this one that we're running in this team uh, you're looking like a, a super crit double edge to get us and then they've still got to deal with Incineroar and Tornado so it doesn't look too good uh, Thomas just taking his time here to think about what he wants to do does he want to go for that double protect or does he want to attack or does he want to just click that forfeit button um, we'll soon find out uh, there's a double protect, yeah, but it does feel unfortunately there's the fake out just in case he went for an attack um, And there's the ice beam which will be more than enough to pick up the knockout and uh, Clinch our first victory of the episode, which is excellent So very good game to Thomas and uh, a nice victory for us to get started with so we'll move on and um, Hopefully like I always say it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent, but um I, I always think it's really difficult. Like the, one of the reasons why I probably, if I was playing more competitively last year, and I really appreciate Groudon uh, as a Pokemon, and I was I loved the fact that it won the World Championships and Groudon Lunala. Obviously, I did an article. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, get asked to do a bit of an article on the uh, the official Pokemon site uh, pre US Nats, and uh, my my little pick was. Uh, Groudon and Lunala, I love that combination, I really do, and um, I just think it's very difficult, whatever you do, when you're playing against uh, Ray Rayogre, it's just a hard archetype, isn't it? We're not going with Battle Royale music, let's go with uh, Lusamine version 1, um, yes, but yeah, I think you've always got the edge, it's just... Um, it's just very difficult, isn't it? But the Dragon Claw does help out there, and if you position yourself well, you, you make sure you try and lure your your opponent into Mega Evolve in the rain, then you can really use your weather then. Uh, it's If your opponent's smart and doesn't Mega Evolve uh, early on, and you've still got that airlock to contend with the whole time, it makes things very difficult. But we've got our next opponent, we've got Mitron VGC, using a QR code team, which um, I'm not too familiar with. It looks very similar to a very good friend of mine from Australia, um, but it is made up of the Medichamp, the Lunala, the Kyogre, Tabacoco, Snorlax, and Gengar. So it's maybe dual Megas, Mega Gengar, and Mega Medichamp, um, or maybe just a different variation of Gengar. So that's something we'll have to watch out for. Uh, the, the whole premise of the team is the get the Tailwind going with Lunala, um, and use Medichamp to support that. I think I'm gonna go Tornadus. I really wanna go Tornadus Kyogre here. Um, could I punish? Or could I punish with Rayquaza? The reason I'd say this is because if you don't, if you don't fake out the Ray, we you, you lose your Medichamp. Um, the only issue is leading this Coco becomes a bit of an issue for us. I'm going to bring Incineroar back and... Oh, maybe Cartana is better than Incineroar in this matchup, to be honest. I just worry a little bit about the Lunala, but we do have Ray. And we just, we've got to make sure that we're, we're taking care of Ray. Uh, Cartana with a sack. Oh, where are we going? Screens all over the shop. And I didn't even go into team preview there, I don't think, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting used to it, getting back into the swing of things. Um, yeah, I just think it's going to be very difficult for us to actually prevent uh, their Tailwind setup. And they're going to be in a position at some point where the Kyogre's out on the field with the uh, the Tailwind up. And um, we're not actually going to see that, which is interesting. Just the, the only reason that Incineroar would have been good would be in this specific circumstance where we've got a nice switch in um, uh, but unfortunately that is not the case uh, so do we mega evolve I mean where are you gonna fake out with Medicham? I'd always I'd always think you probably want to fake out Tornadus um, we could maybe get away with a cheeky earthquake here with Ray 
you just got to worry about the ferrinium. But it's likely that it's not ferrinium, and it's more likely that it's the, the Z move is on Lunala. I really should swat up more on my uh, QR code teams, but that's what I think. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the earthquake. I think we can probably get it off here, and if we can, it'll make this matchup so much easier for us. The problem is if we lose Ray here, and this is a little bit risky, um, is that the Lunala matchup gets a lot harder because we've not got any um, dark type attack to, to hit it super effective with. So let's see, let's hope they try and prevent our speed control. Fake out. Yeah, okay. Wild charge. Perfect. So we're going to actually get rid of the, the Coco here. Um, and we'll do some nice damage to this Medichamp. I always want to put a P on the end of it. Medichamp. Uh, Medicham as well. Um, okay. So what's my opponent going to bring in next? I mean, they could bring in Lunala. For sure. Uh, it's going to be Kyogre. Maybe they haven't bought the Lunala. I mean, it would be a bit strange for them not to bring it. But I think now, if we get a Tailwind up, we're, we're sitting all right, really. I mean, we've got the option where we could Tailwind or we could go for the Hurricane. But I think for the, the actual... Well, to be honest, uh, if we Tailwind now, we might lose Rayquaza here. But I think it's probably worth it at this point because then we get our Kyogre in. And to get rid of uh, Rayquaza, you're going to have to Ice Beam it. And that means that Tornadus doesn't take any damage. Ooh, Bullet Punch. Interesting. Hmm. Last ditch attempt to get some damage off. We get the Tailwind up with Tornadus. Um, we'll get the Earthquake. And that should take down the Medi Cham. And uh, the, the Kyogre here. So, uh, we'll not take down the Kyogre, but get some nice damage onto it at least. And we'll see what the Kyogre goes for. Is it going to go for a Water Spout? So Ray should take this, yeah, and Tornadus as well, because this is a nice bulky Tornadus. I've used this before on the channel, I used this in the 19 season, uh, it's got a wiki berry, it's, uh, yeah, there's a Lunala, and what we can do now is just Earthquake again and go for a Taunt into the Lunala, just to prevent it setting up the, the Tailwind or Trick Room, whichever way you're going to go, could be Trick Room, you know, um, because there's a Snorlax there as well, but we just do see the forfeit because we were able to manage the field a little bit better. And we got that turn one right, and that's the, that was the key there. So I think that made it a lot easier for us to close up. But uh, very good game to my opponent and uh, both opponents today. Very good. Uh, we will wrap things up there, though. It's been amazing coming back into this series. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the, the episode today and are looking forward to the rest of the week with this team, which we will be playing with. Like I said earlier in the video, though, if you've got Pokemon that you would like to see featured, uh, teams, archetypes, anything in particular, do leave them down in the comment section below and more importantly if you've enjoyed this video do remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content and uh, as always leave your comments down below just let me know what your thoughts are on today's episode what your thoughts are on coming back to this daily battle series the more serious one and uh, just how you've been doing because it's probably been a little while for some of you since i've uh, i've spoke to you and i will try and get back to you all as soon as possible but um we'll wrap it up there thanks so much for tuning in and uh, we'll be back with more Pokemon battles tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.